Well, good morning. It is a Saturday, and it is time for Tricks of the Trade with West Tennessee's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jim. How's everything today? Well, it's Saturday and it's early. That's all I'm sure of but right it's now. It's cooler. Oh, man, this is going to be it's nice. A- They're talking 62 degrees tonight. Get out the overcoat. Yeah, man, open the screens and turn on the attic fan. Oh, ooh, man. That, we just that dated ourselves, nice. didn't I'm, we? I'm tired of sweating myself. Ah, oh, ooh, listen. <laughs> I can sweat sitting still. And then you throw on a, a corset like I'm having to wear around right now. And it, uh, I get home and the bottom half of my shirt's a different color than the top half. You know, I have this trouble wearing my jeans, and and when your thighs start sweating, it holds your drawers and it pulls them down. Yes, so your, your britches that were two inches too short that morning uh-huh. are now down in your shoes. Dragging the ground. May I suggest some of these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might need to go to that. But oh, anyway, listen, that's a, a, it's you, one of those. You things. talk about an admission of being an old geezer. Now, when you start wearing these, that's that's about the worst, is it? <laughs> I still hate them, but it's, it's either that or, or as you said, you're, you're pulling up all day long, you know. Well, it's one of them things, you know. Yeah. It's just one of the joys of maturity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. The phone lines are open this morning to call John, 731-891-6161. Or we'll take your text if you don't want to talk to us this morning, 731 731- Four one zero seven five six zero, and by the good graces of uh, John Rawl, we are right now on Facebook Live on y'all.com and News Talk West Tennessee, so you can uh, you can see the sausage being made this morning. Yeah, this is stressful. I've been told I need to smile more. Well, see, I, I've even gone to wearing a collared shirt here on Saturday morning just oh, so really? I can look good. Didn't help, did you, it? You did. <laughs> There are times you're speechless, like we were talking about off air a minute ago. I don't know what to say exactly, but yeah. you look fine, well, young man. Well, that's all right. That, well, thank you for the young man, you lying dog, you. Ah, well, you know, it happens. Ah, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, we... I, you know, I don't know, but I, I kind of feel like I've been around the world this week with just all kinds of strange stuff. Strange stuff? Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to start it off this morning. And this is uh, this person, I believe, is a victim of the TV shows. Uh oh. And the one that where you know anybody can fix anything in thirty mm-hmm. minutes. Yep. Yep. But they leave out just a few little important details <laughs> that, in this case, caused a, a two-story uh, calamity with water cascading everywhere. Uh oh. Now you wouldn't think this is going to happen. But it did. So here's the scenario. You're gone for a few days. Mm -hmm. And you come back and you walk in the house and you go in the bedroom and your ceiling is on the floor. There's water coming from upstairs and you hadn't been there. Oh, boy. And you go in the basement and you have another ceiling that is now (laughs) on the floor and water is just trickling everywhere. Now. The thing of it is, the water was turned off. They turned it off before they left. Ooh, this is like this is like Ripley's Believe It or Not. I, I'm yeah. telling you, and and there's some things you got to see with your own eyeballs, <laughs> and I did. So I go out there now. I kid you not, the water yep. had been turned off. Right. So they called the day before, and when I get out there. The water is still dripping out of the ceiling, and the water is off. Hmm. And it's coming from the top floor. Well, I get to looking, and I go into the bathroom in the vicinity of where things are, and the floor is wet. And it's dripping from the toilet. Aha. Uh-huh. And yet the water is off. So I get to looking to see where the water is coming from, and it's coming out of the handle, the flush handle on the toilet. That's different. Yeah, you don't, it, it, it's not supposed to go there. No. <laughs> so, so here we go. I reached down and I turned, the well, first thing I did is I flushed the toilet. I mean, it was clear water. You sure. know, I knew it was coming from the supply. Right. And I watched it slowly fill back up. First thing I found out was that the valve that cut the water off didn't really cut it all off. There was a little stream. Tiny, teeny, itsy bitsy stream, but it was enough that over time it would fill the tank back up. Mm-hmm. Now that's problem number one. Mm-hmm. 
Problem number two is why was the water coming out of the toilet handle where you flush that thing there? You right. Know? Uh-huh. It's not supposed to come out right there. No. So I took the lid off the tank, and I looked in there and just kind of went, huh, there's a your overflow tube that is supposed to catch your water. Uh-huh. The water wasn't even getting to the top of it to go into the overflow tube. Right. Yet water was coming out the handle. And then I saw the problem. On one of these little shows, yep. they show you how to change out the insides of a toilet. Right. Like the fluid so they, master thing. They had put about. in a new fluid master, which, by the way, had gone bad and it was still seeping water in. Oh, but the big problem is they had changed out the flapper assembly and overflow tube Mm. and put in a universal one. Now, anytime somebody says universal, something's fixing to happen wrong. Mm -hmm. I I tend to run from that. That's right. You know, this one size fits all. No, it doesn't work. (laughs) It don't. That's right. And in this case, this was a little short squatty body toilet with a little short tank on it, but it had a tall tube on that new piece they put in. In other words, that water could almost come up to the rim of the tank before it would go into the overflow. But the top of that overflow was higher right. than the hole that went through the side of the tank that had the, the toilet flusher in it, the ah. handle. So there you go. So had to go in there and reach under the toilet and cut the valve off to keep any water from coming into the toilet. Now we got to go in and saw the top off of the flush Mm -hmm. uh, off the 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 discharge the overflow hose and get it to work it but in the meantime here it is you've cut your water off you've done everything you could to prevent anything awful from happening while you're away right and it happens anyway (laughs) all because of a universal Uh fitting that was too tall and they didn't tell you sometimes You need to make sure that the top of that tube is still below right. where your toilet handle is. I would, I would, I would, just based on what you said, I would venture a guess that a man put this in. Because had he read the instructions, <laughs> <laughs> number 8 B says, shortened tube to desired height. <laughs> you know, you would think that, but uh, you know that's not even really anywhere. Nowhere in there. The you just you're just supposed to innately know that. You're, that's right, and that's <laughs> the trouble. The, the the innateness ain't there somewhere. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid overcomes innateness. Doesn't? Yeah, that's right. But, but we're yeah. using some big words this morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, I, I can't even. I can't. I thought about spelling it, but I can't. No, don't don't go there. No, don't go there. But anyway, we got a couple thousand dollar water damage job. I out guess. Of that. I and, guess. Uh, is that is that covered by homeowners? Well, oh, <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna find out because uh, it was a discharge of water. Yeah. So they'll probably cover the damage that it caused, but they won't cover the ineptness of the wrong type of tube being in there. Uh huh. So, you know, it sounds to me like it could be a liability claim if a plumbing company had put it in. But I don't know that a plumbing company put it in. I don't even know if it wasn't original with the toilet. That, the, the, the jury's out on that one right now. Because uh, if it wasn't for the failure of the fluid master, the water yeah. wouldn't still be coming in. That's true. To raise it up. But it, it failed, causing the other to fail. So... Who are you going to point the finger at? I really don't know. Whichever one's got the most money. I, you know, you've been around attorneys long enough to know that. I know, but that's <laughs> who gets most of the money, the attorneys. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Well, you know, last couple of weeks you have been favored by the ghost poet. Uh-oh. You have, uh, you're on the wrong side of the poet this morning. I got news for you. Uh-oh. So what have I done now? Here's what it this says. This is early in the show. Here, early in the show. It says, I tuned in to learn some fix-it tips. But John might be letting the ratings skip. He opened the show. I had regret when he told everybody his underwear was wet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ghost. We appreciate it. <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy's good. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll meet, you know. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, here's a, here's a second one. I'm going to lift you up. 
Oh, we are. Okay. Second, Here we text, go. second text this morning says, great tip the other day about the reverse switch on the ceiling fans. Yeah. I don't even remember I did that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a helpful thing because I never know which way it's supposed to be. Oh, you blow down in the summer and you blow up. Blow up. <laughs> in the winter, boom. Now, I don't need boom. Well, that, you know? that happens to me because in the winter I don't get out as much and I sit around and eat too much and I blow up. Hey, so that's I ought right. to be able to remember that. Kind of like the stalactite poem, we know. We- now, I, I, <laughs> uh, that, that explanation off air has uh-huh. stayed with me all week long. Yeah, that, that works. But it does. It, <laughs> yeah, does. That it absolutely works. Absolutely works. works. Thank you, Texter. We, we appreciate that. Uh, just in case somebody missed that, the reverse switch on the ceiling fan does what? Changes the airflow. Yeah, it makes it turn you know, in the opposite direction. Yeah, you know, uh, in the summertime, you want to breeze on you. Yeah. And it blows down mm-hmm. like all fans are supposed to do. Right. But in the wintertime, it's cold, and you may not want a breeze on you, yep. but you want to circulate the air. So you flip that little switch on the side and wait until it stops turning before you flip it. Yeah. Because that'll mess something yeah, up, too. Yeah, yeah strip the But it actually up. pulls the air up and throws it over and runs it down the walls all the way around, and you don't feel the breeze, but you still get the benefit. Of, of a better air circulation hmm. and it keeps cuts down on having those little drafts you have like in the farmhouse where you know you feel something coming through the wall around the windows and doors and all that stuff so that's the way we do it yeah that lines makes, are that, open that this makes morning sense. yes they are yes We're they gonna, are uh, well let's let's get some phone calls this morning that, that would be 731-891-6161 we do love the texas though 731 731- Four one zero seven five six zero. You got it. Any way you want to do it, we'll be happy to get you on the air and talk about. We can get serious or we can get foolish, and sometimes we don't know the difference. That's exactly and, right. Uh, nor That's... do we care to. But uh, we'll see kind of what's going on this morning. Um, I I had a question asked of me the other day, and I'm going to be jumping around a lot this morning because we don't have anything planned as we sell to yep. do. But uh, I've talked a lot in the past on the shark bite. Pity. Yeah, go ahead. Are we on there? I uh, know we got a little glitch. I'm going to work on that, while, but we're still on Facebook, so rock and roll. Okay, all right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll get that going in a minute. But uh, I get get questions, ask a lot of questions about new stuff on the market, and one of the things that is favored, seems like, by all are shark bite fittings. Now, what those are, are little copper fittings to where you can join pipes together and you simply just push them in. Uh, you don't have to glue nothing. You don't have to twist. You don't have to do anything. You literally just stick the pipe in the fitting and it grabs it with almost superhuman strength and uh, it will not come out and it will not leak. Now, there's only a couple of situations where you have a little trouble with them. Number one is if you are uh, putting the pipe in and you get it a little crooked or, as we say, cattywampus uh-huh. sometimes, it will uh, cause it to get into a bind because you hadn't shoved it in there far enough, and sometimes it will leak. But occasionally you may put something together and you have to take it apart. And that taking apart scenario gets a little tricky sometimes if you look at the top of one of these fittings there's a little bitty plastic ring that goes around the fitting right before you slide the pipe in Mm -hmm. and you have to somehow compress or pull push that little fitting little piece of plastic down in order to release the pipe to get it out and that's hard to do Uh, but they do make a little tool course you have to buy it to uh to uh, that grasp around your pipe and it slides down and you can compress that with one hand and pull the pipe out with the other but they also we figured out in the field a way to do it without having to buy that little tool which always gets out of place and that is just get a nail on uh pipe clamp you know these little clamps that you hold your pipe on the wall or on your stud and it's got a nail in one side and you just put it in well it clamps around the pipe too you can get one of those and snap it on your pipe and pull it down towards the fitting and it'll do the same thing and uh, release your pipe so you might want to 
give that a try. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. We've got a little technical thing we're working on here. But the uh, the uh, Facebook feeds on y'all.com and News Talk uh, West Tennessee should be up and running. And we'll, uh, we'll do a little work here and be back in about 90 seconds. Stay with us. This is John Allen's Tricks of the Trade on a Saturday morning. Anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and release bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advance We Have in Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Sakura Japanese Restaurant invites you to lunch today for only $7.95. Busy day? No problem. Sakura delivers. Sakura Japanese Restaurant is Jackson's original sushi bar with over 75 selections of fresh cooked and fried rolls. Sakura recently introduced the new Chinese menu. Impress your friends, family, and business clients this season with a Sakura meal or stuff their stockings with Sakura gift cards. Jackson's original sushi bar is Sakura online and on Gary Chow's Drive next to Gold's Gym. And now a word from Paul Schulze, a satisfied customer of Hal MacGyver with United Country MacGyver Land and Realty. Take it away, Paul. I had a 109-acre farm with a log home to sell, so I went with Hal MacGyver because he specializes in log homes, farms, and lakefront properties. Someone from Missouri looked at the farm the very next day, and the day after that, someone from Florida gave a full price offer. If you want to sell your home for the best price, call Hal MacGyver at United Country Realty. There you have it. Call Hal MacGyver with United Country MacGyver Land and Realty, 660-5150. Too. Truly an awesome spectacle. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. It is 19 past the hour on a Saturday morning. This is John Allen's Tricks of the Trades, and we would love to have uh, your phone calls. Uh, we are having a, a little bit of a glitch at the, uh, at the transmitter, I am told, this morning. They're working on that, but we're still live on y'all.com and uh, News Talk West Tennessee on Facebook. And, uh, and you can get us there, or you can go back and watch it later and see what all the good stuff you missed. But uh, hope to be back on the air here in just a, a couple of minutes. The hardest working man in radio is on the job, Brad McCoy. So we'll get that fixed. So uh, let's let's continue on for our Facebook watchers. Oh, we are okay. Well, you know, uh, you you, you kind of wonder what in the world to get into next. But we were talking a minute ago about that little switch on the ceiling fan yeah mm-hmm. which which reminds me of a of a little story a couple of years ago <laughs> where i get this call from this uh young fella now he was probably 10 12 years old okay and and he calls me up and he says mr allen can you come help me and i said well, what's your problem he says i got to get something fixed before mama comes home and i said what do you got to get fixed? He says, well, can you just come over here? <laughs> now, I knew who he was. Yeah. And I said, all right, I'll be over in a minute. So I go over there, and he's in his bedroom. And uh, he'd been scuffling, I guess you'd say. is the mm-hmm. best word. Yes. Him and his little brother uh-huh. had been scuffling. Scuffling. And they were throwing things at one another. And uh, one of the things they started throwing was c- wads of clothes they're old they're you know dirty clothes that were on the foot of the bed or whatever yeah well apparently one of them picked up a pair of jeans (laughs) and wanted to sling sling it over to the other one 
And instead of it going straight, it went up. And it hit Uh-oh. the ceiling fan. Well, when it hit the ceiling fan, it's just like the legs of those jeans opened up and straddled one of those uh, blades. Well, when it did that, it kind of caused that fan to kind of go whoppy jawed. And, and when that happened, it fell out of the ceiling, snapped the wires in two, and hit the floor. It was then that we realized that we found out later, uh, Daddy didn't put the fan upright. Aha! Uh-huh. He had uh, he had replaced one of those little uh, two dollar ninety five cent ceiling light fixtures with a ceiling fan that had one of those little plastic boxes up in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And that little plastic box up in the ceiling couldn't support that forty pound ceiling fan. <laughs> and when when Junior threw them jeans over the blades. Uh, it was just enough pressure to pop that screw out of that little plastic housing, mm-hmm. and down come the fan. Well, I told him, I says, you know, we can put the fan back up, but I can't get that hole in the ceiling fixed by the time Mama comes home. He says, what am I going to do? She's going <laughs> to get me good. I said, well, let me talk to her. Yeah. We end up blaming it on Daddy. There you go. Because <laughs> he put yep. the fan up wrong. Never fails. Never but fails. Um, the, the long story short is, the reason I brought this, this tale up was the fact that a lot of people do that. They'll take a little little uh, inexpensive light fixture, and they'll take it down, and they'll put something up that's a whole lot heavier. And you can't do that without getting it properly supported. And... To do that, sometimes you have to change out the box or even go up in the attic and put a little two-before brace up there that will support the box by just screwing a, th- a screw through the box into a support member that you put up there. Right. And once you do that, then you can go about mounting your ceiling fan properly. So when you're getting ready to do something like that, if you can reach up and grab the box with a pair of pliers, before you do anything. And if you can wiggle that box up and down, mm-hmm. chances are you need to put some additional support on it in order to support that ceiling fan. So you might want to give that a try before you end up uh, getting into a, a blue jean fight with your brother <laughs> and end up something unfortunate like that happen. Oh, that, so that's, that's crazy. It, that's uh, crazy. You know, it's kind of fun. I get these calls every now and then where somebody done really messed up. Uh-huh, in panic city. And, and it is a panic to uh, uh, get something repaired before the authorities <laughs> come in <laughs> and, and commence to bringing out the switch and the bell. Or yeah. do they even do that anymore? Can you get a switch out after a youngin anymore without getting sued? You probably get thrown under the jail by or, or someone yeah. take the kids away. Or, yeah, they'll sue you nowadays. You know, yeah. do you ever think of suing your parents? No, no, because I get a whipping for it. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, no, I think no, that's no. what's wrong with the world myself. I do too. Not, not enough, enough whippings. Not enough whoopings. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. You, you used to, who was it? Carl Perkins used to talk about uh, being circle whipped when he was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah I've been there a couple of times. Uh, I, the the fear of that was enough to. I know, I know, but boy, stop they, you from doing when it when they grab you by the arm, boy, you stuck because you ain't got nowhere to go but around and around. My daddy told me one time, I don't can't even remember what I did. He said, "Boy, go in there and get a belt off the hook." Oh. So naturally, I'm looking for the lightweight cloth belt. <laughs> Not the leather with belt. A, with a small buckle. He could still make it hurt, though. Oh, Lord, yes. Absolutely. Oh, well, anyway, yeah. that's another yeah. story that, you know, you can't do that anymore, but you sure do. So, sure do need some to. Some of these kids need a whooping. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely correct. Absolutely and, uh, correct. And, you yeah. know, they, they used to could do that in school, too. And, and They can't do that anymore. But I knew that if I got one at school and Daddy found out about it, I'd get another one when I got home. Yeah, and back in those days, even without all the electronics and the cell phones and everything, that old landline worked pretty good because the 10 minutes it took you to walk home from school, they knew it already. That's right. Yeah. They communicated better then. And parents yeah. and teachers, oh. Yeah. But that was back when teachers were in charge. Yes, they were. And they need yes, to be now. Yes. I can remember walking through the high school, the corridors of the high school, and Fred Stanley would come out of his office, and it was like Moses in the Red Sea. Oh, yeah. People just moved to the side. That's right. Yes, sir, Mr. Fred, how are you this morning? Come on through. <laughs> 
Mr. Pan was the same, same way. way. Oh yeah, That's even right. even more so. It's, yeah. It yeah. was a he had a, rep, he had a reputation of having a, a very large paddle with a bunch of holes in it. That's right. I, I never I never was on the working end of that, but I was outside a door one time when he was when he was using it and it was an ominous sound coming through there. I almost think at times they would put the speaker from the morning announcements up uh, next to the paddle room <laughs> yeah. so everybody could hear it just to set the fear that that tone That's tonight right. everybody better straighten up and That's do right. right right oh by the way oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> phone lines are open this morning 731-891-6161 we need to hear from you this morning and uh the victory high to text line 71 731-410-7560 put you right in the in the bucket and john will be glad to help you with whatever honeydew you might be uh, messing with today and with the weather being cooler a lot of people are going to be out to doing some stuff they put off because it's hot it's like working in attics oh yeah Ooh. <laughs> luckily i hadn't been up there the last day or two my oh, head is healing there you go there and you go. uh everything seems to be uh, <laughs> everything's good doing a little better yeah that's that's good yeah. that's good because you, you know when your hat starts to grow you know you got a problem <laughs> <laughs> it's something swelling up there you know that's not a that's not a good thing hey you know it's one of them things you know you uh you were we were talking before uh, before we came came on the air and by the way we are back back on uh, the radio oh, radio airways missed about uh, eight or ten minutes there and we apologize for that but the computer is humming again and the squirrels back on the track and we're we're off and off and running you mentioned something before we started uh, uh, about a, a, something you ran into that not only had you confused with all of your knowledge but also had the local uh, electric company scratching their collective heads also. Oh, having yeah. to do with our good friend Lumens. Lumens. And his what's his what's his cousin's name? Uh see, there I go with that yeah, deer yeah. in the headlight look yeah. again. Lumens and what what was that? Uh, yeah, anyway. It's, anyway. it's LED lighting. LED lighting. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, I've had a little I've had a little uh little problem this week. I got stumped. And I That's unusual. R- realized that other people got stumped. So let me just kind of set the scenario here because it's probably happened to somebody else. But, you know, uh, we are working on a little project up at the river. And uh, in the process of completing this residential project, the customer wanted to change all the lighting out to LEDs. Right. Simple project. Go get the light fixture. You take the old incandescents down. You put the new ones up. So we did that. And... uh, the house was not occupied, so when we finished our job, we turned the lights out and left. Well, the homeowner calls me later on that night, and he says, uh, got a little problem at the house. I said, what do you mean you got a problem? He says, well, the lights are off, but they're still on. <laughs> so I, I kind of did a do what back to him. Yeah. He says, yeah, it's crazy. He says, you flip the switch off. But the, the bulbs, the LED bulbs, have a soft, dim glow about them. They like still they're wiggling. not really going off. It's huh. like you got a nightlight in each room now. Weird. I said, that is strange. So uh, I came back the next day, and I looked at it. even kind of hard to see in the daylight. You had to literally unscrew the bulb to notice just a little change in the hue of the bulb. Right. To know that the light was on or off, but sure enough, there it was. It just had a had a dim, uh, the bulb was just kind of dim. You flipped the switch on, came back full brightness. So I got to thinking, well, I'm having some feedback problems, but I don't know where. <laughs> so we went to check everything in the breaker box. Everything checked out fine. Could not get the lights to go off. So. I said, well, it's got to be something that I've messed up on. So I went back, and I'm checking all my junctions. I spent between four and a half and five hours one afternoon, me and my son, trying to uh, figure out what I had done wrong because I made all the connections myself right? and couldn't figure it out. So I said, well, if we're not getting any feedback from anything inside the house, must be coming from the power lines outside. So we call the utility division in that particular county, and here comes the truck. Here comes the foreman. And uh, we tell him what the problem is. He says, well, we got to find where that feedback's coming from. I said, okay. 
have at it. Well, this is on their end of the line. So he goes to the meter first and unlocks it, checks inside of it, and says, ain't no problem there. I said, okay. He says, well, I'm going to have to get the bucket truck out here because it's probably coming from our transformer out here. It's older in the hills. It's one of these is put in long time ago and they don't maintain those things on the river like they do if you're in town a lot <laughs> it looked a little rusty up there and thought maybe a squirrel had laid down over the terminals or something was sure. wrong up yeah. there you know so here they come out with the bucket truck and they put a brand new transformer up there my lights was still dim and uh he says let me call my supervisor so he called his supervisor supervisor came out stumped him so now we got the foreman we got two engineers we got me and we're all stumped as why these lights won't go out but here's the funny part about the whole thing if you unscrewed this led light bulb and put a regular incandescent edison light bulb in there mm -hmm. everything works just fine lights go go off the bulb goes off well i was talking to a friend of mine about this and uh, they wanted to Google it. I said, <laughs> of course. Yeah, you, you Google away, but I don't Google. I don't Facebook. I don't yeah. do anything. Well, they sent back a, 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 a they call it a link. I guess that's what yeah. you call it. Yeah. Where they tell you to go look at something. And, and there was this uh, uh, Yankee American sitting down at his workbench <laughs> and had all kinds of little gizmos laid out. And he was going to give you an explanation as to why those bulbs still glowed. Okay. He said it could be nothing more than a cheap LED bulb. Then again, it could be feedback, but not likely. And then he went into something else. But the problem was my southern ears couldn't understand what that Yankee American was saying <laughs> because he was talking so fast. <laughs> And I couldn't get the volume high enough because I'm hard of hearing yeah. to understand it, even if he slowed down. Well, I got to thinking about things. And I said, okay, if it works just fine with an incandescent bulb, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work fine with an LED bulb, the resistance of a incandescent bulb's got something to do with it. Okay. And I got to put my electronics hat back on, which I went all the way back to high school to Mr. Lebinsky's class. Okay. And then I thought, okay, if we're putting resistance in the line, that cancels the feedback. But we got to get something that will discharge properly to pull it off. And then I thought about Lamont. Now, Lamont... Lamont Okay. A little incident happened, talking about things you used to could do, yes. but you can't do anymore in school. Lamont was a young man that had a habit of going to sleep during class. <laughs> he couldn't stay awake. Could be because of his uh, nighttime activities. Uh, yeah. Now, he, let's see, I'm trying to think of the name of that show. Was it maybe Miami Vice? What was the pimp's name? On Miami Vice. There was one called Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear. That's yeah, it. Yeah. You know how Huggy Bear had this reputation with the ladies? Yes. Well, At least he thought he did. Yeah. Lamont kind of liked that. And he'd strut around a lot like he was something that he wasn't. And uh, uh, Lamont would fall asleep in class. Well, he did that one day. And the teacher decided he had had about enough of that. And he wanted Lamont to pay attention. So he reached in his desk drawer. Mm -hmm. And pulled out a large, and I do mean a large, it's about six inches long, about two inches in diameter, capacitor. And that was going to be our subject of the day. Well, that capacitor was charged. And you can get a pretty good shock from a capacitor if oh, you're not yes. careful. Yes. Well, he walked over to Lamont that was sound asleep with his head down on his chair, and <laughs> he stuck that capacitor on his shoulder. Uh huh. Come on, Lamont. Fell out of the chair on the floor and had an accident in his britches. Oh, no. Yes. Ooh. And he looked down at me and he says, Lamont, we're going to talk about capacitors today. Are you with us? He said, yes, sir. I'm yes, right sir. here. I got you, baby. <laughs> so, I got you. So, so anyway, that reminded me this capacitor. That's what I need. So I went and called one of my factory reps 
and found out that this problem had been happened in the southern part of the state back in 2017. And the, the, uh, the uh, re- resolution to that was there's a company, uh, electronic company uh, called Lutron, and they made a mainline capacitor, about a six-buck item, right. that you can put in line with your lights, and it does the same thing to draw the extra current off as a incandescent light bulb did. Hmm. So once I did that, everything works fine. So now the people that couldn't figure it out along with me, I got to tell them about this in case somebody else has this problem. Right. Because sometimes in using this new technology, you have some problems that they don't tell you about on the instruction sheet. True. So if you have problems with your uh, LED lights uh, continuing to glow a little bit and you've cut the switch off, you may have to introduce a mainline capacitor into the uh, scenario to uh, resolve your problem. Well, I've got LED lights all over my house, and I don't have that problem. Now, why would I not have it, and he does have I it? I don't know the answer to that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why some do and, and some, some don't. don't. Yeah. It makes no sense to me. It just happens. Yep. Sometimes you just got to believe it and move on, kind of like Santa Claus. Yep. And, yep. Uh, Ripley's believe it or not. That's huh? right. So all right. Let that, me... that happens. We've got a we've got a call coming in. Let me let me do this text right quick, caller. Hang on for me just a second. Uh, John had LEDs blink in an outside fixture when regular bulbs did not. That's right. Didn't feel like fooling with it, so I put the regular bulbs back in. Yep. There is a man that's got that's that's a man right down my alley. Well, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Now. On that particular situation, I'm told you got one of two problems. One is you do have a so-called cheap LED bulb. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the LED bulbs don't have filaments. they got little diodes, and when the electricity hits them, they they shake, rattle, and roll. And uh, they just get excited and quiver. That's what puts off the light. Exactly. But it doesn't put off heat. Exactly. And sometimes when they don't get to acting right or they get old, they'll start blinking. I had one happen in my ceiling fan the other day, get to, like a strobe light going Ooh. off while I'm sitting there trying to watch gun smoke. <laughs> it's quite distracting. Yes, it is. But uh, it's either that or he's getting a problem and needs to maybe introduce one of these online, uh, mainline capacitors on. And uh, I can you can order those from Amazon.com. Uh, we ordered several of them yesterday to solve this man's problem. So right. that's probably what's wrong with that person's uh, situation, but it's called a uh, MLC capacitor. Okay. And it's put out by Lutron, Lutron, L-U-T-R-O-N, and you can get them on Amazon.com. There you go. Let's go to a phone call and see what we got this morning there. Good morning and welcome. Good good morning. Hey, how are you? Um, I'm good. I have a what I think is a simple problem for you, but uh, my house is five years old. Uh, When I go to the faucet, uh, you know, there's a a little strainer in the the faucet. Right. When I take that out, there seems to be uh, black matter there. I don't know if it's trash or what it is. I clean that out. Two weeks later, I go back it seems to be as bad as it was before. Right. What am I dealing with, and how, how do I resolve that? Well, you're getting that matter from the inside of your pipes. Now, not your pipes, yeah. though, but mainly the main lines. I'm assuming you're on a city water supply. Is that right? Yes, okay. correct. And have they recently flushed those lines? You know how they go out and they just not turn them? I'm aware of. Well... They, they will do that. They'll flush them normally twice a year. But the residue that builds up inside of those pipes ends up coming into your house. They will not only uh, cause that black stuff to uh, accumulate in your strainers, but if you have w- little white crystals in there as well, it could be the dip tube in your water heater is deteriorating. And that was a uh, subject of a class action suit many years ago, and some people still have that problem. But it's nothing to be alarmed about. 
but sometimes you have to flush those lines out by just simply taking those strainers out and letting it run for a while. Now, some people have okay. it so bad is they'll put an inline strainer. And uh, if you had a well, that would be something you would normally already have in line, but you would strain the water to take those impurities out before it got into your faucets. But uh, that's what you got. It, it's just coming mainly from, probably coming from the main lines in the street, especially if those lines, somewhere along the line, they were not plastic, they were galvanized. Uh, and it's those little, uh-huh. those little fragments where it's, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, rusting on the inside of the pipes and it's breaking loose. And it, and like, okay. it happens a lot in, in Jackson here. And I, and I don't mean this in a bad way to the utility division because it's just natural, but especially if you live at the end of a cove and they're flushing the lines out, you'll get more of that sediment than if you were in the middle uh, of the block somewhere. But uh, I don't know of a real good way to tell you to stop it because it's, it could be coming from a block away. But if you put a filter in on your main line, it would catch a lot of that and slow it down tremendously. Hope okay, that, uh, how do I put a filter on my main line? You can go to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or any of the big box stores, and you can put in a main line filter, and uh, it's got a cartridge that comes with it, and you simply cut your main line where it comes in to your house. Now, if you've got a crawl space, you can put it in underneath. If it's a slab house, you may have to go out in the yard and dig down to it and put it in. It may take a plumber mm-hmm. to do that, okay. but you will you will put this in the main line coming in, and uh, it will filter your water before it gets into the house. Okay. Not a real okay. expensive thing Thanks to do. Much. So you know, good luck with that. If you need any further help, give me a call. Appreciate it. All right, Thanks, thank Tom. you. Thank you, caller. And I think we've got another one. Uh, let's see. They may have dropped off here. Let me see if I can go to that one. Da, 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 da. Nope. Um, they did. They, they, they dropped dropped away. So, oh, well, yeah. they'll, uh, maybe they'll call, call us back. back. Yep. Yeah, that number is 731-891-6161 or the text line at uh, 731-410-7560. Another texter echoing the same problem. My LED blinks outside, too. Yep. So now we all know what it's all about and how to get that get that done there, there are things even with the best of technology there are certain situations where you get little little glitches and uh you know they tell you these bulbs that you buy now are good for five years well they're not i've had some go bad in less than a year it's true and they'll sometimes when they start to go bad it'll be like a strobe light going on in the house mm-hmm so it's just kind of one of those things. So yeah, and there are, there are some people who are very susceptible to that quick blinking like a strobe light. It, oh, it can yeah. send them into uh, into seizures and, yeah. and all all sorts of bad things. So yeah, be careful. Be careful of that. We got another call coming in. Let me hit that button right about there and uh, go for it. Good morning, caller. What can I do for you? Good morning. Good morning. What's going on? Talking about those light bulbs. Talking about those light bulbs. The same thing with me on my back porch is a new bulb. Put it in. When I turn the switch on, it would start blinking. Uh, my first thought was, and I'd go out there and I'd shake the bulb. You know, reach up inside the face and shake it, and it would you know, blink that much more. So to make a long story short, I figured i got to pull down the receptacle. We'll pull down the uh, fixture and put a new one in. Well, my brother said, let's just try another bulb. So we took that bulb off the back porch, put it on the front porch, and it's working perfect. Yep. Took mm. it off the back porch, put it on the front porch, it's working perfect. Replaced one on the back porch, no problem. All I did was change it from one side of the house to the other. Brand new bulb. So. All right. Now, here's so, something hey, else you may <laughs> have encountered, and this happens a lot on ceiling fans they have a little device in ceiling fans now to prevent you from putting in a bulb that is too large and it will make it start blinking and we have to take oh, them out it, it's it's really strange but 
in your particular case, are you trying to, uh, in old terms, what wattage of bulb did you have in there when you had just an incandescent bulb in it? 100. A 100? On the outside, 100 All right. watts. All right. So you're, yeah. you're probably putting in about a 1,500-watt lumen bulb now on an LED I don't side? even know what they are, but, you know, what they say, you know, they say it's a reference to 100 on the package. And that's what I go with yep. on the outside. All right. Well, as I was talking about a little earlier in the show, there's – you can put one of these little mainline capacitors in. They're about the size of a bo- little, what used to be a box of matches. Yeah. And you can put that in your light fixture, and it will eliminate this blinking. And and as I said, I didn't know about any of this myself, and I've been an electrician for 47 years. and uh, But it, it, it took care of the problem. The other way you could do that, I'll, I'll almost bet you that if if you could find on that light that's on your outside, if you found out what circuit that light bulb was on when you were flipping your breakers, yeah. let's just say it controlled maybe yeah. the light in your den as well. If you took a light, light bulb out of one of those fixtures in there and put an old incandescent screw-in bulb in it, it'll probably stop that one right. on the outside from blinking. <laughs> now, that but sounds crazy. R- remember, remember, remember what I said. I took the blinking light bulb and put it to the front porch, and it quit blinking. Now, oh. I took another, and these are these great value bulbs from Walmart, so that might be part of the problem. That's but part I took of your another problem. bulb, same make, and screwed it in on the back porch. And I'm not having the problem. Well, I took the the light bulb out of the front back porch, put it in the front porch. It's not blinking. Yep. Put a brand new bulb out of the box into the back porch, and it's not blinking. All I did was changed it from yep. one side of the house to the other, and it's not blinking. Is it on the same Figure circuit? That out now. Is it on the same circuit? <laughs> no, it's on a different circuit. That's no. what I'm telling you yeah. about different right circuit. there. Different circuit. Yeah, I if, got you. I'm following you now. Yeah, yeah. if you if you wh- the, the, whatever's the, on that circuit, if you'll change one of them bulbs and go back to an old Edison bulb, that may solve your problem on the back yeah. porch. Hmm. Or put one of Another these capacitors question, in line. Hap- I'm sorry. Go ahead. What happened several years ago when they said they're going to quit making incandescent bulbs? I got a lot of chickens, and uh. I like to use them for either heat lamps or <clears throat> I just like the incandescent bulb a lot of times. Yep. They said it's going to quit making them. I bought a truckload of them darn things, and they're still <laughs> on the shelf at Lowe's. What happened? Well, the price went up on them is what happened. That's called a gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So, uh, and some people say, "Sucker!" Bulb, the rest of my life, I'll never run out of light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, yeah, I couldn't tell you how many hundred watt bulbs I've got. Well, I tell you, if you let people know about it, you'll find out that people will buy them from you because uh, they are quite in demand and they are hard to find. And in many cases, no, Lowe's has still got them. Well, they still got them. You got to look for them, though. I mean, it, you really got to look for them, and they're a whole lot pricier than they were back when you used to get ten for a dollar. You know, it's <laughs> true, it, uh, but yeah, you hang on to those things. <laughs> yeah. You can uh, you can also sell them as brooder bulbs later on. Yeah, when you want to keep the chickens warm because right. they put off heat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just think about this, caller. If you'd yeah, have done the that. same thing with toilet paper, you'd be a rich man today. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I tell you what's fun. You see people. I was in Walmart today, and this woman, I don't know what she's afraid of, but she is loaded up with toilet paper. <laughs> if you want to have fun with people, tell them, you do know that's got a shelf life. In about a year, that stuff just start disintegrating. Yeah. Now, that's funny. I like that. Yeah. That'll get yeah. their attention. Got a shelf life. About a year, and it start disintegrating. And, and the, and the funny part about that is some people will believe that. <laughs> Oh, man, man, man. Oh, great. Well, thank- I'm going to let y'all go. All right, All right, man. Appreciate your call. 
Call <laughs> back again. Thanks Y'all a lot. Good morning. All right. You too. We know Goodbye. where to, we know where to go when we need some uh, in, incandescent bulbs now, don't we? That's right, man. I hope you're logging that number down <laughs> over there. We may have to call it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Seven three one eight nine one six one six one is the call in number. Four one zero seven five six zero is the Victory Honda text line. And uh, let's see, we may have one coming over here. It says bronze old bulbs hold for four years. They sell them on eBay. Say that again. Bronze old bulbs hold for four years. Sell on eBay. Oh. You know, that's something I've never done is eBay. Me either. But I guess I, I hear people do it all. You can sell anything on eBay. Listen, my former partner bought two or three vehicles from eBay. And didn't have a minute's trouble with any of them. Really? Mm-mm. That's the, what That's what I was always scared of. I want to get my, I'm old school like you. I want to get my hands on it. And see how it fits before I buy it. Yeah. Be whether it's a pair of pants or a car. That's right. Yeah. Or you can fit in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah for sure. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's true. Let's see. I, I, we got, yeah, we have another call coming in. You want to take right, that let's one? Let's take it. All right, see call, what's going on. Let's see if we can get you on right about now. Go for it. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Tray. Whoop. I think they dropped it. A- no, there he is. Hey, caller, you there? Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. good. What's what's going on this morning? I had a question about a I had a question about a ceiling fan. The switch will turn the fan on and off at the, you know at the wall. Yeah. But it it won't turn the light on, and I'm wondering. And I've heard people. I don't know anything, but I've heard people say that it it could be the switch in the wall, or it could be the ceiling fan. But the fan works, and the light doesn't. All right. Well, let me ask you. That? Let me ask you a question. This could be a real easy fix. First of all, did it ever work? Did the lights ever work? Oh yeah, it's a probably three-year-old fan. Okay. But, you know. All right. There is a pull chain up on your light fixture in the ceiling. Chances are you've got it turned off up there. Oh, I'll try that. Yeah, all right. Tried but, all right. Know, then let me ask you another question. Uh, do you have one switch on the wall that supposedly turned on the fan and the light, or were they separate switches? No, it's a, it's a combo. So it's the same switch. Yeah. So one switch supposedly turned both of them on. If that's Correct. the case, you know, you know how it is. If you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If if that's the case, you may have either a wire that has come loose up in the housing where the fans tie up into the ceiling. Uh, there's normally like a black wire and a blue wire. The blue wire normally goes to the fan, and the black I mean, the blue wire goes to the light, and the black wire goes to the fan. And they're supposed to be tied together if you're operating everything off of of one switch. Uh, it could be as simple yeah. as that connection has come loose, or You've got one of those little devices down in the light kit that has blown because maybe you put too large of a wattage bulb in it and it automatically kicked itself out and you'll have to bypass that or put another one in. But it's probably a, a, an easy fix on that, but you may have to get an electrician to actually come out and decipher which one it is because you may or may not have to take the fan back down. Right, but you you don't you don't think it would be in that in the switch though, right? No, sir. I don't. One of them, not the if, other. If no, it's not in the switch. It's up in the fan. Is where your problem is. Okay. All right, man. I appreciate it because I've been fighting it for a few weeks. But yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. Thanks, man. Y'all have a good day. All right. Thanks a lot. We're gonna take a little break right now. And when we come back, we'll start uh, kind of closing things out. So uh, if you got something on your mind, you want to give us a call, better do it quick. Text line's open and the uh, phone line is open. We'll be back shortly. Nashville's best variety show, The Token Show, is coming to Freed Hardeman University Friday, December 4th. As seen at the Ryman, The Token Show will bring you comedy, world-class vocalists, and Nashville's best session players before you hear from star of film and television, Gary Sinise. Be part of this one-of-a-kind holiday experience at the FHU Benefit Dinner. 
visit FHU.edu for tickets and sponsorships. All uh, right, it, and that uh, Gary Sinise coming, of course, to uh, to Freed Hardeman University and their big fundraiser this year. That might be a great concert. I, I'm not concert, but a great, great talk to go see. You know, you know Gary Sinise, Captain. Uh, Was it Captain oh, Dan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lieutenant yeah. Dan. Yeah, like Lieutenant that. Dan on on Forrest Gump. I'd like to see him. I really would. Now he was also in one of those. Uh, what was that other movie he was in uh, with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know where he comes back from way off and he's going to kill somebody? What? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a Schwarzenegger fan, so you lost me on that one. Oh, uh, well, anyway. Hey, we, got a, we got a text coming in right now. We got about, uh, uh, looks like about three and a half minutes left before we got well, to, stop uh, to, talking. to Let's move out. Hi, right, you ready? All right. I have four LED lights in my den that only blink at a specific time each day. They only blink for about 30 seconds and stop. It does not happen again for 24 hours. Is the problem a cheap bulb, or does it need a capacitor? Could be either one, or it could be Mama playing tricks on you and just flipping the switch. <laughs> I don't know which it is. But that's one of those things you're going to have to experiment with a little bit. I, I, you know, people like to assume you've got a one-size-fits-all on, on problems. Uh-huh. Sometimes everybody has unique situations and you just got to play with it so i wish i could give you a straight answer on that but i just can't do it yeah yeah it it almost sounds like you left a christmas timer on and it (laughs) that's that's right (laughs) but that's probably not it no i i did i did that i I had a lamp keep coming on upstairs and i could not figure out why it kept coming on and then going off at 11 o'clock is because i still had my christmas lights timer plugged in (laughs) <laughs> and when I unplugged the Christmas lights and plugged the lamp back up, I didn't take the That's timer out of the loop. <laughs> that was that was wrong. I hate to even admit that because I'll never hear the end of it. I'm going to bring you over to my house when I want to check the blinkers on my car and see if they work. <laughs> yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Left was good. Right was good. Right yeah. was good. Right was good. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord! Things are getting silly. Yeah, well, long. you know, with two minutes left, we we almost made it through without without going there, but we couldn't just couldn't do it, could well, we? Well, you know, that, that, that's the fun. <laughs> it, that's uh, what I love about not having scripts. We don't have a clue what's coming out of our mouth. No, that's true. That's yeah. true. And and with all this technology now, John Rawl makes it uh, possible for us to go back later on and see all the stuff that we shouldn't have done. Oh yeah. Oh if yeah. I can ever figure out how yeah. to get on. Was that YouTube and y'all.com? Yeah. And call, call Josh. He can get you there. It's, yeah. it's Facebook Live, y'all.com, News Talk West Tennessee is where you can see it live and see it on uh, on archive. And it's also on YouTube later, John. Am I, am I right about that? Do you have yeah. to put the apostrophe yes. Yes. <laughs> in y'all.com? No, leave it out. Y-A-L-L.com. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what happens when you do that? You you uh, I guess you just scroll down till you find it right. It's yeah. You just use and your fingers. Look for uh, yeah. tricks of the trade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, and you'll see you'll see yourself. How about that? Well, we got, we got about thirty seconds left, and I want I don't want to get away without saying is you had a birthday in your family. That's what I was fixing to get to. Yeah. My oldest youngin, John Nicholas. There you go. Is uh having a birthday today. And, All right. Uh, I wish old Nick well, and uh, he's always been a bright spot and. My life and my wife's life, and and uh, never always good for a laugh. And, yep. Uh, yep. Uh, so happy birthday, son! We're just uh, proud to, that you've been with us as long as you have, yeah, and just you keep go, on baby. being there with you us. Go. So, happy uh, birthday, Nick! He's yeah. about the same age as my my son. Yeah, I was thinking Nick, yeah. forty one today. Yeah, Michael's uh, forty two. So they're they're about a year apart. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it makes us both look old, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't. Ooh, man, I can't. 41. I, yeah. I remember yeah. being that. No, I can't even remember that back that far. Yeah, me either. My baby girl's 44. That hurts even worse. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not Bless bad. Not bad for a kid to say would never go home from the hospital, huh? Well, that's pretty yeah. good. That's all right. <laughs> Bless her heart. What a joy. We oh. got to get out of here. We're going to do this again next Saturday, if you're willing. Yeah, and if I can remember, we might even do a little bit of it on Thursday. Yeah, we can do that, too. Yeah, yeah. that one we call Honey Do's and Honey Don'ts, and it's here on 93.1 also. And uh, it's our time is up. Jimmy Leach is banging on the door, and sometimes he's packing, so we better let him in. Let him in. We'll see you next week at 8 o'clock for Tricks of the Trade.